When I, was a, when I was a kid, I noticed that if you leave something on the lawn, for example, like a rake, on a, in a couple of days, the sun will print the shadow of the rake onto the lawn. This occurs because of photosynthesis, a process in which plants use the energy from sunlight to produce sugar. This idea stayed with me throughout my childhood and into my college years, where I major in studio art. And through the years, I have fine-tuned this process and named it chlorophyll printing because chlorophyll is the pigment that makes plants green. The chance to explore this body of work came to me when I returned to Vietnam, my country of birth, for the first time after fleeting with my family when I was just two years old on a small fishing boat. Being in Vietnam, I noticed that so much of the war was still part of the landscape. I was confronted by the subtle but ubiquitous physical remnants of war, such as remnants of bomb craters that had been converted into rice paddy. I started a body of work called Immortality, the remnants of the Vietnam and American War. I included the American War because in Vietnam, the Vietnamese call it the American War, while here we call it the Vietnam War. I was intrigued with the commonality among the North and South Vietnamese Army, the American soldiers, and the civilians who were caught between the crossfire. I thought, what if the plants could witness these horrific events? What would they remember? What would they say? How can they teach us? I was thinking of matters decaying and transforming into other materials form. The war becomes part of the landscape, and natures remember the bloodshed and elements that compose the landscape. The residue of the Vietnam and American War is stored in the stem, roots, and leaves of the plants. Have you ever thought what your body is made of? We learn in school that everything is made of atoms. Atoms rearrange themselves according to the law of nature to make us. Think about the benches you're sitting on. They are made of atoms. This whole room is made of atoms. Everything is made of atoms, and so are you. Imagine the numbers of atoms in our bodies. There must be trillions and trillions of atoms. Each of those atoms carry a history that reaches back to the beginning of time. All have many stories to tell. We are made of history, and history is in our body. This series is called Searching for the Cosmo. When I was a kid, I was in love with the Cosmo. When I look up in the night sky, I imagine my life out there, not bound to this planet. And we are composed of elements such as hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and iron. And the birth of an individual is not the first creation of life, but the continuation of one that has always existed and will continue to exist. And I think just that simple idea connects us to the cosmos, so we won't feel too lonely in the sea of life. Stars are very special. When I look up at the night sky, I see stars. And stars are just like human beings. I mean, they are born, live out their lives, and die, sometimes in these great explosions called supernova. And when the matters are spilled throughout space, new stars are, are born, and the cycle begins again. What do you see when you look into the mirror? Of course, you see yourself. But have you ever thought that you were also seeing your parents' faces, and your parents' parents, and your grandparents' parents? And by the time you get to your great-grandparents, that is 14 people. Imagine that, by chance, 14 people met and made you. <laughs> so, recording my family's history, the history of war, the history of nature, and the, the history of life is very special for me. When I think about the future generation, the generation after my death, I want them to know that history is not something of the past, but of the present. It is in the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the soil in our garden. So next time, when you're in your garden, pick up a handful of soil 
and imagine the history you are holding. Thank you very much.